Let's Get Down to Business is presented by Bravo, the marketing arm of Ash Brokerage Corporation, the practice enhancement company. All this week, it's interviews you can use. And on today's show, top producer and CPA, Richard Newman, nationally recognized policy due diligence expert. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and contributing author to Backroom Technician. We're on location in Indianapolis, Indiana. Let's get down to business. Well, welcome to the show, Richard. Nice to meet you. I have to say, you have a unique entrance into the marketplace and the way you frame it is quite distinctive. And I'm always looking for our show, especially, Anomaly, anomalies. I love anomalies in our practice. Now, I'm looking at your credentials, and I remember I have, of course, a lot of people see my uh, good friend Ken Davis from our study group. He's highly credentialed, but CPA, PFS, AEP, and CAP. Why don't you just run me down? I get the first one, the CPA. Give me the other three. Uh, PFS is under the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, a designation that allows us to be financial planners. Uh, think of it as almost the CFP of CPAs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and AEP is an accredited estate planner. Much of my business is in the estate world. And the designation I'm most proud about that I recently received over the last couple of years is a chartered advisor in philanthropy, allowing us to make an impact and helping our clients understand the magnitude of the giving that they can do mm -hmm. and the impact that they can make either in their local community or whatever they define that. Isn't means. that, though, a very new certificate or a kind of a credential? I'm lucky enough to be invited in, and I was one of the first 500 to receive that designation. Well, now, when you think about multiple de designations, and you have multiple entrances into the market, but your forte, your umbrella, is really the affluent market. Talk a little bit about something that would, to me, be so restrictive and very monitoring. I mean, when we talk about auditing, I think that's CPA. That works for me, okay? Right. But you're talking about the most sophisticated life insurance audit system. Exactly. Talk Mark. about that. Well, unfortunately, life insurance, there's some statistics out there that tell us about 70% of life insurance policies in the marketplace today have some sort of problem with them. That problem could be as foolish as it being owned incorrectly, creating a taxation. An ex-wife could be the beneficiary of a policy, and I promise you the new wife doesn't like that. Or it's possible that the policy can be replaced at a significantly reduced cost. But that's not where audit stops. Understanding why the life insurance is owned is a critical portion of the life insurance audit. That tells us whether the client should be buying more, should be buying less, or what other areas within their estate plan, their business buy-sell plan, their deferred compensation plan for their employees, what other holes are in those plans. And that's where we work with the advisors to mm -hmm. the affluent. When you got into this originally, did you ever see that it was going to go this high? Because I'm thinking life audits is that really a gateway into the affluent? And I would have never thought that, to be honest with you. Neither did I. Neither did I. You know, it's interesting. Uh, we just recognized that there was so much bad product on the marketplace, and we felt that if we could just alert the professionals who are talking to their clients about the problem, mm -hmm. we'd be able to help them fix it. Matter of fact, my PR firm tells me that what you're really doing is telling everybody about all the dirty little secrets in the life insurance mm -hmm. industry and how to fix it. Your practice is now not only impacting the CPA community as a CPA, but you really deal with high-end attorney firms. Talk a little bit about how they really have adopted your platform as their kind of due diligence for, for policies. It's interesting. It's not only their due diligence. Uh, I hate to say it, but the legal community understands the law. They don't understand our business. They don't know how to differentiate between somebody that's a really good life insurance advisor and somebody that's a run in the middle advisor. Mm -hmm. And the irony is not only in our business are we helping their clients get the right product, put it in the right place, develop their needs, all those turn into the services that the CPAs render, the attorneys render for their clients. So everybody wins. The client ends up with a better product, a better plan, and the CPAs and the attorneys who are working with us end up recognizing they were helping them generate revenue, but not walking on the street trying to find somebody new that doesn't believe in them. Mm -hmm. They're going back to their clients who've already been their client for many years, and their clients are saying thank you. When you saw this at first, when you put it together, you, it was kind of a, a co-venture uh, with Ash Brokerage because they had their own audit system already set up. How much of that do you use in your system? How Only 100%. 
Only 100%. Only 100%. So, so, but, well, I'm sorry to say this, and it sounds so uh, self-serving for us because it's there, our show's sponsored by them, of course. But, I, you know, you look, you get to see a lot of audits. You you know what it's like as a CPA. You've seen other independent marketing organizations put out what they say is an audit or, or surveillance or due diligence. Why'd you, choose the, why'd you choose ASH's audit system? Well, I've been working with ASH for about 10 years. Uh, not only the people that I do my business with, their family. Mm-hmm. When I got married five years ago, Jason Grover was my best man. And, but when you take a look at them, so we have a relationship, and, and our firm is based upon relationships. Ash's entire culture is based upon relationships. But it, it, it's, it's, it's very interesting what takes place with the audit because we hear many times that banks or trust companies have companies that they pay to do an audit. And we've seen those audits, and those audits come back saying how wonderful the product is. Then they say, Richard, why don't you take a look at it? The product was fine, mm-hmm. except our audit disclosed that we could buy twice the life insurance mm-hmm. for the same premium. So many of those audits only focus on the product that's there. They never speak to the client. They don't understand the need for the life insurance. They don't have a clue as to the insurability of the client, their current health. And they have no idea. They don't take that, mar- that, that audit and compare it to the market mm-hmm. of available options. And that's what we do. So it's really, it's interesting, the name of my company is called Life Audit Professionals, not Life Insurance Audit Professionals. Mm-hmm. Because it's not just the life insurance that we audit, we understand why they have it and how to make it better. Well, when I think about that, I think that you're combining some of the higher end issues of a CPA audit with the highest end issue of one of the top IMOs in the United States, combining those two tactics to come up with the best audit. To me, that's huge. Well, we come back from the break. We're continuing our interview with top producer and CPA, Richard Newman. And don't forget, you can request a copy of the life insurance audit that Richard uses with CPAs and attorneys right at www.downtobusiness.ashbrokerage.com. And you can register right on the site for all that free information. And remember to sign up for your own 30-day free trial offer for Backroom Technician at www.brt.com forward slash Trial sign up dot ASPX. We'll be right back right after the break. Take a close look at your hard earned dollar. How do you think your money's doing? Are you keeping an eye on it? Is it protected from taxes, inflation, and market risk? Over time, those Washingtons could become Franklins. With Tax Advantaged Indexed Universal Life from one of the largest distributors of Index Universal Life, Ash Brokerage. Well, welcome back. I'm Steve Savan. And remember, you can watch all our episodes of Let's Get Down to Business, including my weekly consumer show, Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game, right at www.ashbrokerage.com. Just click on the show's logo and it'll take you right out to our homepage. And just a heads up, before moving forward with any of the ideas you ever hear on our show, always consult your tax advisor, legal counsel, as well as your broker-dealer compliance officer. Well, let's get down to business. We're continuing our interview with top producer and CPA, Richard Newman. Well, welcome back to the second segment, Richard. Thank you, Steve. I have to say, let's go back to this new designation, because to me, I don't think most of our producers, CAP, again, what is it again now? The Chartered Advisor in Philanthropy. Now, that, that is really a small school of people that have done this. You said 500, right? I was told that I was one of the first 500 to get the designation. Now, that designation, uh, it's not too often I hear a story, and I heard this one about your, your, this designation, actually was the deal maker for a huge case, and I'm sorry, but it's not every day I hear, well, my CFP got me in, or my CPA designation, or my JD got me in. You know, credentials really aren't really, you know, gatekeeping kind of ideas, you know. So, so talk to me about how did that work, and why was it so critical in this case? The designation is one thing. What we had to do to get it was a different, and it wasn't studying from a book. How this course was taught was 20 or 25 of the highest of high-end professionals down in the South Florida area getting together every other Tuesday for about a year and a half. And it was taught from the standpoint of everybody in that room who was CPAs, attorneys, wealth advisors, and charitable consultants. Everybody in that room knew everything about charitable remainder trusts, charitable lead trusts, private foundations. Nobody needed to be taught the the actual nuts and bolts. Mm -hmm. None of us went to a bedside manner class when we went to college is how do we evoke the emotion of what it means to Mm. somebody to want to make an impact? 
And it was amazing because I was one of the younger guys in the room, and I'm going to be 57 on Monday. And these were people who had years and years of experience for the most part. And their experiences and what they've done and how they've gotten their clients motivated and how we spoke together about developing our clients' desires, how they can use philanthropy to help raise their kids and, and bond their families and tell the stories of the families to keep the families together. It was the impact that they could make in their community. Uh, it was the most amazing class that I was taught because it really allowed me to go on the other side of the table and be with my client. Whether they're philanthropic in nature or not, it didn't matter. It allows me to get under the skin of my clients and understand what, what makes them tick. And it's amazing that families don't recognize the capacity of their giving until somebody asks them why and how did it make you feel when you wrote that check. When you did this case, the actual client was not really pro-life insurance. No, they really, first, first meeting, they really said to me, Richard, I don't want to make my spoiled kids more spoiled because we're a very high net worth family and if we don't do anything, they're going to get a boatload of money. And by the time we got done and we recognized what the impact that they wanted to make, they had a private foundation already that we had no direction. And by the time we were done utilizing Foundation Source and many of the tools that they have, which talks about how you can use philanthropy to really train your children, to teach them the value of a dollar, to teach them what they mean in society, mm -hmm. to teach them the impact that they could make, that they're lucky enough to have been born into a family of, of means that not everybody has that, that luck, and that's something not to be wasted. And the big question that really turned around is, is because this gentleman was making some significant contributions to charity in our area, and I asked him, would your kids continue this when you're done, when you're gone? And he started to laugh. And I said, how would you feel about that? And that changed the entire dynamics of the conversation. Hmm. When we were done, not only did they buy a lot of insurance, they're leaving virtually their entire estate to, to their foundation. They're, they've hired a consultant to help them work with what's the meaning, what's the charity, who's going to do what, what impact do we want to mm -hmm. make. If it's going to be feeding people, how many people do we want to feed? And if do you just want to feed people, or do you want to also create what Tudor Jones is doing in New York, talking about how to get mm -hmm. these people off the food lines, mm -hmm. and make them productive members of society where they're contributing, not taking. Tudor Jones, the Robin Hood guy. Right. Yeah, okay. Now, when you look at this, you know, you teach this course now, too. Now. Right, you're I'm the now teaching this course. Of, on the CAP designation, right? Exactly. Okay, now, when, you, when you're on the other side, you're the student, now you're on the other side. Why are people taking this course? There's 25 of us that started. We were so moved by that initial class. We've continued as a group, and we've developed a 501c6, I believe, a charitable organization called Advisors for Philanthropic Impact. We were, we were able to, to create a, a, almost a movement in South Florida that we want to be able to make a difference. Mm. Where all of us have, have gotten to stages in our careers where we've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm. And what's our legacy going to be? Mm -hmm. I'd like my legacy to be, at least in, a, in the professional environment, to help people recognize that we have a duty not just to ask our clients, are you philanthropic, and check off the question if they say no. We've got to get deeper with them. Mm -hmm. My goal is to get attorneys to say, listen, I know that I'm at $600 an hour. I'm turning off the billable hours right now to sit and chat with you about what you'd like to have happen, what kind of impact you're going to be. Mm. And the irony is, is every time one of these philanthropic plans gets put together, there's private foundations that need to be created. There's charitable lead trusts, charitable charitable remainder mm -hmm. trusts, all these take work by the mm -hmm. professional. Mm -hmm. And not only do they take work by the professional, it's a proven fact in the, in the uh, financial industry. Uh, lawyers, they, their CPAs, they lose these clients when grandma and grandpa pass away. If you're working intimately in strategies that involve the family, do you think you've increased your mm -hmm. chance of maintaining that client when grandma and grandpa are gone? Mm -hmm. We have about... 20 seconds, this has been generating leads for, for affluent, high-end people, for advisors. All we want to be is a resource to the advisor, to the affluent. If we can demonstrate to them that we have a unique knowledge in the life insurance area, our goal is to make them better at what they do. When we do, business has no choice but to.
Well, that's our show for today. Remember, you can read all my online insurance news commentary, advisor blogs, and articles right on Producers Web, as well as my answers to consumer questions on the Insurance Library. And don't forget, you can view all our past episodes on our on-demand video section located at www.downtobusiness.ashbrokers.com. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. Or just email me at steve.savant at ashbrokerage.com. And remember, you could be wiser as an ash brokerage advisor. <laughs>